What's up, Facebook? <laughs> it's your boy Scott <laughs> and Andy coming at you. This is going to be an awesome show. Yeah, uh, a lot of good information today. Yes, kind of getting people in that mindset, this proper mindset. You got to think about. Let's do an analogy. Okay. Right, Andy. So let's say I walk out in my yard and my tree, something's crazy going on with one of my trees. Mm. I have some choices. I can call the tree scientist. Okay. All right. I could try to find if there's a tree scientist and find this tree scientist person, see who it is, call them and say, what's going on with my tree? Or I can call the landscaper. Which one would make more sense? The landscaper. The landscaper. The tree scientist may have some awesome insight onto the cellular level, level of why the tree is doing what it is, but I can't apply that. The landscaper has been working with trees for 25, 30 years, mm -hmm. day in and day out. They understand what's happening and how to correct it, how, what I can do to correct it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So that goes into what we're going to talk to about, talk about today. Yes. With three and four year olds. We're going to do a series. This is our first in a series where we're going to break down for parents some of the reasons from a social, physical, emotional level why the kids are doing the things they are at age three and four today. Mm -hmm. Next week will be five and six, seven through nine the week after. We're going to break down these things as to why they're doing it because the better we understand it as parents and why our kids are doing it, the more able we are to correct those behaviors in a positive way. Yep. Right? There's that book, What to Expect When You're Expecting, but there's nothing of like what to expect with your three-year-old. Oh, for real? Not that I know of. Someone yeah. can correct me if I'm wrong, put it in the comment, and I'll see it. But Did you read that book? No. Oh. I was about to say, Andy, <laughs> you and I might, did, we, we might have to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, no. I, maybe I thought this was kind of some kind of announcement you're going to make to the world. Yeah, no. All right, so. Not yet, at least. Andy's not expecting a child. No. Yeah, he's good. No. Awesome. Um, so let's, I'm certainly not. <laughs> let's get into the meat and potatoes of what we're doing. Um, this is going to be great. Again, um, you know, our live show folks, you can weigh in. We'll respond to it. If you're just listening to the audio and you hear us talking to people, it's uh, the folks on our live Facebook feed that are asking questions. But Andy, so I guess uh, there's four different categories, I guess we, can, we yeah. can think of when we're dealing with kids. What would those categories be? Yeah. So it was told me as PIES, P-I-E-S, right? Okay. Physical, intellectual. Emotional and social. And these, so it's their physical stage of development that yep. we're dealing with, okay? Intellectual. Okay. So, like, how they think. Um, emotional, obviously how they handle emotions. And then social, how they are with other kids and adults and things like that. Okay. And we all have these, I guess, four categories where we have strengths and weaknesses in those areas, I'm assuming, right? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, but as a global look, you know, the three and four-year-olds generally fall into certain categories. So, mm -hmm. um, awesome. I guess we'll start, you said it's pies? Pies. On cheat day Friday, I'm going to have to go get a pie now. Just apple pie, dude. I'm American dog. There's no other pie to me. All right. Um, and I'm going to be looking off. I had to take notes on this. I have an all right memory, but I'm not that great. Well, so, not only that, we also want to stay on track because my stage of development. I'm working on my memory skills right now. <laughs> people have said a lot of things about us, Andy, that we're handsome, we're well-spoken, we're amazing individuals. All one, true. one critique, though, is that sometimes we have a tendency to go off track. Yes. On a tangent sometimes. Like right now. So, no, we have, we have a, a list of things we want to go through. So let's talk yeah. about, um, I guess, let's start with the physical. What, what are the, some of the, um, I guess, overall 10,000-foot view of the physical stage of development for a three- and four-year-old, Andy? Um, to put it simply, it all stems from one thing, and that's just that their muscles aren't done developing yet. They have low tone in their arms, their legs, their core. They're just not very strong yet. You know, I mean, they've only been on the earth for maybe three, four years. Okay. Their muscles just aren't done developing, right? Yes. So you might, you know, your kid is supposed to be sitting in their chair coloring or something, right? But they just can't sit still. They're fidgeting around. They're standing up, sitting down, kneeling in the chair instead of sitting in it. They're always moving around, right? Okay. Or if they're supposed to be sitting on the floor listening to, you know, I don't know, story time or whatever at a daycare, and they're not. They're, like, laying back or, you know, sitting forward, which kids do in our classes all the time it's not because they don't want to be engaged and it's not because they're not interested in what it is it's just it's physically difficult for them right so the way I've described it in our training before when we're working with our instructors is like if you had to sit in like a squat position all day no chair or anything you'd get exhausted right your yes. legs would be tired your abs your back everything would be tired it's a similar feeling for them when they just try to sit and cross their legs. It takes physical effort to stay sitting up. You know, their heads are still, you know, disproportionate to their body as well. So they yeah. have to support that as well. Um, 
It's like a sure. bowling ball on the end of it, like a straw. It's yeah, like, <laughs> all over the place. Um, um. <laughs> well, that's yeah, and that's funny. I've explained that to parents a lot of the times too. So it's not what, what you're explaining to us now, Andy, and you're coming from a wealth of experience at this point. Mm-hmm. Is that it's not a lack of focus. Not saying that a kid at three and four doesn't have a lack of focus, but just because they're fidgeting in their chair does not immediately say, well, the kid has an ability, has a brain problem, they can't focus. No, it's just they're, it's, sorry, physically difficult for them. Yes. Okay. Um. So, you know, it's just like, you know, you have mentioned squat. We've all, many of us out there have done planks. Mm-hmm. And when the plank starts getting hard, right, you don't hold that plank and we start moving around and shifting. Yeah. Same thing. I remember when I was a kid uh, in Catholic, uh, Catholic church, grew mm-hmm. up as Catholic. And we, you know, there's points where you kneel, you sit, you stand. And I remember like standing up to do Our Father as a and kid. Like, and be like, oh my God, this is torture. And <laughs> Our Father was like 17 seconds. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so, all right, that's very, very insightful. Yeah. Um, now, what about on the intellectual side? So, intellectually, um, of course, they've only had maybe, depending on when your child starts speaking, they might even have only like one to half a year experience actually speaking. Um, maybe two years. So obviously their vocabulary is very limited. Okay. All right. So what they understand isn't as developed as what we understand, and the way they speak obviously isn't as well developed. Um, so well, it's funny you say that because I think as parents and as instructors, mm-hmm. myself, I fall into. We start speaking to the child. You know, we can understand the limited vocabulary they're th- sending back to us, but, but then we speak to them in a full vocabulary, and we're, we wonder why they don't get it. Yeah, we might as well be speaking a different language. Yeah. So and then you're like, dude. I told you to do this. Why aren't you doing it? And they're literally like, don't know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. But um, because of that, they're going to be mostly limited to visual and kinesthetic learning or you know, hands-on learning. Okay. Um, so if you can show yourself doing something, then they'll learn better that way. That's why a lot of kids shows, um, you know, like on Nick Jr. or whatever, when they're talking about like educational things, they're actually showing it as opposed to like, well, two and two make four. And they're like, they don't show it because – they just learn better actually seeing how things work and how, you know, it happens. Well, we found that in the martial arts school, too, that sometimes when a child in the 3, 4, even in the 5, 6, is struggling with a physical element by, mm-hmm. like, you know, say, keeping those punches straight, we can say, punch straight, punch straight, punch straight, doesn't work. Grab that arm and make the punch go straight for them a couple of times, and then it clicks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so you can expect them to lose focus when you're talking to them. They'll just kind of tune out and think about, you know, whatever. Um, they'll struggle with this one's a big one multiple commands so like if you tell them more than two things in a row chances are they won't get anything after the second one okay that or they'll just get the last two um, so try to keep instructions simple you know go over here do that you know not go over here with this and do that but make sure you add that in there and don't forget this you know it's it's just garbled to them yes so um, well back to the, the last bit on the language real quick and the instructions mm-hmm. it's been said and I subscribe to this theory you ever been reading a book andy and you're reading and then you notice like two or three pages go by that you've read the book but you haven't been paying attention yeah right uh what has been said what the theory is that what happened was somewhere along that line a word came through that you didn't understand Mm -hmm. or a concept came through that you didn't understand and you immediately got off on your own track in your head yeah right and it happens to our kids right we're saying Mm -hmm. something to them they don't get it so like oh well that bird's flying over there i understand that yeah and then we're like oh bent out of shape because you're like dude listen it's like trying man but you're rolling on yeah um and then this one should be obvious to anyone that has any experience with younger children they have no spatial awareness whatsoever um that's why you know when we're playing our games and everything we transition from you know letting them run all over the place to go from one end to the other where they all move in the same direction because i they could see the other kid coming from like 20 feet away but then not realize that they're going to hit heads yes right you know, that's why things like catching for kids are, are tough, and that's why we work on our program to help mm-hmm. build that spatial awareness because yep. that, that three-dimensional aspect yep. is a challenge for them. And that's also why a lot of young kids, when they talk to you, they'll get, like, right here when they talk to you because they don't understand just how close they are. Yeah, close talker. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. All up in your grill. <laughs> um, that's really it for um, the intellectual. But now emotional is really where three- and four-year-olds, like, live, you know, um, because that's their whole world, right? Yes. Um, first is that there's no gray area when it comes to three and four year olds. Everything is black or white. It's either really bad or really great, you know, or it's really scary or it's really fun, you know. Yeah. I'm, re- you know, I'm not in trouble or I'm in the most trouble of my life, yeah. you know. There's we saw no that with, gray area. We saw that with Gavin you know, just the <laughs> other day. I was like, right, he walked up to you, Mr. Andy, I want to listen because he was in trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. so 
that's why even though it's not a big deal to you like look you can't have goldfish right now and it's like what do you mean i can't have goldfish you know and they, and they freak out um I mean, that really is, speaks for itself. Yes. Um, but Any parent of a three- and four-year-old knows what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then if they're put in a situation where they're uncomfortable, they'll usually try to run off to something that's going to co comfort them, right? So in class, you know, the kids get anxious just being away from mom and dad. That's why you'll see them run off the mat real quick, go see mom and dad, say something to them, or not even say anything. Just go look at them and then run back. Mm -hmm. It's because that makes them feel comfortable again, and they come back. Yeah, and we see that in our martial arts school in the three and four. We, and then come five and six, we barely ever see that. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yep. and, and then, then, you know, again, some people aren't martial arts. People who are listening to this podcast aren't martial arts folks. But that's what we see. We'll be teaching a, kid, a kid's martial arts class, and... Kid will be doing awesome with his punches and kicks, having a grand old time, and he just wanders off to see mom for a second or two and then comes back. Yep. yep. <clears throat> and then um, you could also – not this isn't with every kid, but some kids will shut down when they get upset, and they'll just like, nope, not doing anything, I'm done. Um, but then on the other side, they're ha hard to calm once they get into that mode, right? So it's whether they're really upset or they're really happy, it's hard to bring them back from it. And I can vouch for that when they get excited in class, when they – like, even just saying, yes, sir, that turns into, like, a competition of how long and loud they can say, yes, sir, yeah. until they're literally, like, purple in the face. Um, and it's hard, hard to reel them back. It's just because there is no gray area there. It's like, yes, it's time to be excited, so I'm going to put, you know, full throttle on that. You know? Yes. It's just how their brains work. The way I've been I've, – it's been explained to me is, like, you know, the emotions are a river. And one bank is the extreme happy and the other bank is the extreme sadness, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know – as you're more emotional capable as an older person, you can swim in that middle of that, that river much easier. Yeah, but but, but then it's, for those young guys, they can't swim in that emotional river really yeah. well. They're going to get yanked to one bank or the other in a second. Mm -hmm. And then it's hard to get them out of that, off that bank. So yep. that's uh, insightful. Yep. And then we got one more category, and that's the social one. Um, three- and four-year-olds are extremely self-centered. Um, now, I'm not saying that to be you know, rude or anything, but they literally are. Like, to a child, their whole existence revolves around what is coming to them, right? Because they don't think on other people's level. They just know what's going on inside, so that's the most important thing, right? So that's why um, if you tell them, no, you can't do that, they don't understand why, and they get upset. Um, if they have to go do something for someone else or you try to explain, oh, well, that'll make him sad, you know, and it doesn't click. They just don't think that way. Yeah. Well, I guess, again, not to get – Maybe I'm getting off in too much of a psychological, anthropological, sociological, all the logicals. Yeah. Uh, three and four-year-olds still in a phase where they can't fend for themselves. Most animals in the animal kingdom can fend for themselves by age three or four, right? Oh, yeah. Human being can't. They're still very dependent on the parents, particularly the mom, for sustenance mm -hmm. and everything else. So literally, it's like survival mechanism. I, you know, the child needs to only be considered at that age what keeps me alive. Yeah. Right? You know? So. Yeah, yeah. So... Be, and as a result of this and the other things we mentioned, their communication skills are very limited because we already talked about their vocabulary is very small, um, and they just don't know how to communicate what they're feeling. So that's when you'll see a lot of hitting. Even if they're in a great mood, you know, and they're playing around, they'll smack you or they'll push or whatever. It's not always uh, intended as a negative thing. It's just they're excited and they don't know how to get that energy out. They don't know how to express it. So they're like, whoa, boom, you know, yeah. just like – you know, fast movement feels exciting, so I'm going to do that to him. Yeah. You know, that's part of that. Um, they'll mock each other, um, both positively and negatively. You know, if a kid's doing something, they fall down, and everyone thinks it's hilarious. So they're like, well, I'm going to fall down, too, because everyone thought it was funny, you know, because I want to be funny, too. My phone is dying. Um, and then the last thing, oh, yeah, I already said that. They will express themselves through touch, right? Yeah. So. Well, it goes That's, back to that kinesthetic learning as mm -hmm. well. Kinesthetic is touch. So, again, they lack the vocabulary and some of the, the mental capacities, not in a bad way. So the other senses are going to over, uh, you know, take over. Yeah. So, um, so I guess we can walk into a lo talk about a little bit about now. We work on all four of these in our martial arts school. That's mm -hmm. one of the things that makes our program unique, um, what we love about our program and why we see the results we do. Some folks out there don't have their kids in martial arts, don't want to put their kids in martial arts, don't have the opportunity, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. We want to share some information of like, how we do things to, in our school that help develop these things for our kids at age three and four that mom and dad can use at home, or at least to set expectations for teachers and, then, uh, and also set expectations at other 
um, I guess, endeavors that the kids may do, gymnastics, baseball, soccer, whatever. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the goals, if we're going to develop the kids physically, expectations and goals for that physical stage of development? Well, the first thing to cover all of them is just that you want to understand that it's not always intentional, that it's just how they are. Yeah. Um, like a dog, you know, you can't be upset of how a dog acts. It's just how dogs think. Yes. Right? And not to say a child is like a dog, but, you know, people are the same way. People only work in certain ways, you know. Depending on where they're at developmentally. Yes. Yeah. Right. So really to help any of this is just going to be practice, you know, and uh, working on the things that you now understand, right? So the physical where they have low tone, then you can work on things to help build that tone. Now, they're not going to be able to do full push-ups and stuff to start getting swole, but, you know, doing, we call them seal-ups where they keep their belly down and they push their chest up, you yep. know, that's a pretty good workout for them, doing things like that. Well, work, um, definitely working on that core strength. Oh, yeah. Which will help with balance and other things because a lot of uh, – balance challenges with your balance come from your core or lack of strength and lack of stability there yeah so. i mean you don't even have to like okay time to do your push-ups timmy you know just let them play outside you know ram around do things that children do they'll probably take a nap afterwards too so that's a little tip <laughs> um so your goal is there just to have them be able to do those things sit still you know um be able to stay in the same position for a while and focus on you um, same thing, all of this requires practice. Um, for the intellectual, where they don't have much of a vocabulary, work with them on it. Talk to them like they're a person, try not to baby talk them. Um, that goes a long way. Um, you know, work on giving them more complex things, testing them kind of on it, instead of telling them, okay, put this there, tell them three things, tell them four things, you know, whatever it is, start working on that so they understand it, um, which we work on. Every time we teach a drill, we kind of, you know, we keep it simple, but we're challenging them a little bit with how much we tell them. And now with that intellectual a trick that we use on the floor, kind of the connect and redirect. Because sometimes you'll be talking to your kid. We see it on the floor all the time. Mm -hmm. We'll be talking about, hey, you know, we're going to be working on our high blocks today or we're going to be working on our front kicks today. And then, you know, Johnny breaks in like, you know, Mr. Andy, I saw a red car today. Yeah. Just with some, some wildness because he wants to be a part of uh, the conversation. Yeah. It's important not to shut the child down. You know, you got to connect and redirect. I'm like, you know what, Johnny? In that case, you'd be, hey. I love red cars. I saw one today, too. You know, what's also awesome is our front kicks and just kind of get us back on track. Yep. And that way you're not discouraging your child from having dialogue with you. Mm -hmm. You're just, you know, in a kind of verbal ninja way, moving things, acknowledging where they're at with their, with their conversation, but then moving it back to where we need to go. Yeah. So. And Facebook, if it cuts out, I'm sorry I didn't charge my phone. Um, the live people will be like, no. Yeah, but we'll keep going on the podcast. So if you miss anything, just check out the podcast. But continuing on. Um, Oh, and the spatial awareness. Just play catch with them. Do things like that. Have them work on picking things up, you know, stacking them, putting them in other things. That'll go a long way to help not just their spatial awareness, but learning how to um, – their fine motor skills, like using their fingers for things, you know, twisting, things like that. Um, now, emotionally, this is going to be a lot of effort on the parents because um, this is just who the child interacts with the most. Um, you know, work with them on – you know, it doesn't have to be one day like, okay, can't do that anymore because the whole black or white thing, that'll send them into panic mode. Yes. Um, you know, just kind of ease them into it, talk to them about it. Let them, what Scott was saying, don't shut them down when they try to talk about things, even if you think it's silly, you know, to be upset about that or to be excited about that, let them get it out and then talk to them about it. Yes. Right. Now, of course, keep it simple. You don't want to go talking about psychological concepts with a three-year-old, but you know, kind of nurture it, work with them on expressing themselves in more appropriate ways. Yes, we've, uh, some of our previous videos, we've talked at connect and redirect concept at length. Mm -hmm. uh, so go back to our archives for that one. Probably be the subject of further discussion. There's mm -hmm. a portion of it in my book, Shameless Plug of the Week. Um, Boom. About that <laughs> key skill. You have to connect with the child. Anytime you want to influence somebody, especially positively, you have to connect with them. Same thing goes with their, goes with their kids. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the other piece is give choices. I like I do this with my son. Oh yeah. All right, hey, you got to wear a shirt today, and I give him two choices. You got your Spider-Man shirt or you got your Captain America shirt. Which one you want? And you know he feels like that he's engaged in the process, mm -hmm. and thus developing him an emotional thing to help him make choices. So yep. And uh, give tell him about the reward before the requirement too. When you told me about that, it made a big difference. Like instead of saying, um, you know if you clean your room, then we'll go do this. It's like, dude, I'll give you that chocolate. All you have to do is this. And then they'll be like, oh, pfft, that's it. You know, and yeah. they'll run off and do it. 
Um, then the last one is just social behavior. Um, and this kind of ties into working on the emotional thing. Just work with them on it. You know, talk to them about using their words. Um, work on their personal space and showing restraint at times um, where they need to. And that's really it. I mean, just practice with them and try to understand that if they're doing something wrong, it's not intentional. It's just how their brain works. If they're doing something right, then praise them for it. You yes. Know? Um, well, I think what you're saying with the expectations, that's one of the things. And I'm not a saint. I don't have it super figured out as a dad. It's all, you know, literally there isn't really a handbook. There's a wealth of books out there about how to be a better parent. But uh, well, no you know, one knows your kid like you do. Precisely. I think one of the – I've had this conversation with parents quite often is uh, especially when kids are having a little bit of trouble at school. Mm-hmm. I feel a lot of times some of the expectations, I'm not saying set the bar low, but some of the expectations we have on kids are, are just... a little high. Yeah, they're just unrealistic mm-hmm. in the sense of you take a five-year-old and in a school setting, sorry, I'm going to put things on blast, but in a school setting, five-year-old's expected to sit in the chair for 45 minutes and not socialize with for each other. like a full work day, like yeah. eight hours. And, uh, and maybe there's some kids out there who can excel in that environment. Awesome. But mm-hmm. based on their stage of development and the things that we've seen over the years, that's not the best environment. Yeah, right? and just people's personalities. Like, I personally have, still have a hard time sitting at a desk and doing things. Yes. Like, I'm a very fidgety, active person, and I have to be moving around doing things. And, you know, I've, I've, I've dodged some criticism. I've taken some criticism over the years, like anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, in our martial arts school, I remember one time we got criticism. Because if you come and watch our martial arts classes, our kids are getting benefit from it. There's no question about it. Oh, yeah. But it's not the traditional what you see on TV. You think of a martial arts class of, you know, a bunch of kids in line cranking off technique. Yeah, like sit still, be quiet, do your punches. Yeah, all of a sudden, you know, it's like everybody expects kids' martial arts to be, you know, Paris Island boot camp for kids, right? And, you know, I've had parents say, oh, well, when I was a kid, it was like that. And then my counter to them is like, okay, well, how far along in the martial arts did you go? Well, I I just got to be a yellow belt. Exactly. Because you didn't like it. Because it's not Not fun. It's not fun, right? So, and it's not appropriate to a young child's development. Yeah, do our kids learn high blocks and kicks and punches? Sure. We just approach it in a way that's appropriate for them. Yep. Um, kids and, learn best through play. Yep. You know, Melody Schumann says it all the time, and she's completely right. Precisely. You know? um, but, so anyway, that's, that's our perspective. Anything else to add, Andy? No. I mean, I just want to say again, you know, understand where they're at. You know, they're not on the same level as you are, so take that into account nurture the things that need to be nurtured and if it needs to be you know cracked back on do it but again it's not always their fault yes you know and just work with them try to be patient i know it's hard sometimes but i think you'll get much better results out of it outstanding Um, tune in not next week because i'll be on vacation but the week after we'll talk about five and six weeks i've got to tell you that we're going to do it from your vacation oh yeah no like live stream that would not eating at disney that would require me to have technical skills i don't have Gotcha. I can't set up the microphone. <laughs> you just plug it in. <laughs> I can't even stand it up. Like, if I try to stand the microphone, it would fall over. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, so awesome work, Andy. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So a couple things now, guys. If you know anybody who could benefit from this information, a teacher, another parent, please share this, this, uh, this with them. We don't get paid to do this podcast. It doesn't. No. We simply do it because we love what we do and we love uh, trying to help as much as we can. So share that information with it. Another thing, if you are on iTunes and you're listening to this, you know, leave us a review, right? Yeah. And guess, guess what's going to happen? From now on, when I see a review come through, I'm going to give a shout-out on the next podcast. So if you want to hear your name shouted out, even if it's like your, your online handle, yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, icerotrucker57 at gmail.com, I'll give you a shout-out if you give us a review, good or bad. We won't even, even if you diss us on the review, we won't blast you. We'll thank you for the review and give you a shout out. So yep. uh, we want to get some of those reviews out there because that does help us spread our message because the more reviews and more content we have on our iTunes feed, the more iTunes will put in. And it people. just helps us kind of figure out what you guys want to hear from us. You know, if you don't want us blathering on about something boring or something that we think is cool, but you're like, dude, this is whack. You know, yeah. this is the 18th, we need to know. <laughs> 18th podcast that starts up with Star Wars, Star Wars, Scott, stop it. Yeah. Well, so we can't really help that. Can't help that. Speaking of which, we're going to see Star Wars when it comes out. But yeah. let's turn this off now. Yeah. Peace.